This figure displays a generic demand and supply curve. The horizontal axis shows the different measures of quantity. A quantity of a good or service, a quantity of labor for a given job, or a quantity of financial capital. The vertical axis shows a measure of price. The price of a good or service, the wage in the labor market, or the rate of return like the interest rate in the financial market. The demand and supply curves can be used to explain how economic events will cause changes in prices, wages, and rates of return. Here is an example of how these models help us understand markets. In 2010, the median salary for nurses was $64,690. As demand for services increased, the demand curve shifts to the right from DO to D1 and the equilibrium quantity of nurses increases from QEO to QE1. The equilibrium salary increases from PEO to PE1. Initially, salaries increase as demand for nurses increases to PE1. When demand increases, so too does the equilibrium quantity from QEO to QE1. The decrease in the supply of nurses due to nurses retiring from the workforce and fewer nursing graduates, holding all things equal, caterus paribus, causes a leftward shift to the supply curve, resulting in even higher salaries for nurses at PE2. But an uncertainty but an uncertain outcome for the equilibrium quantity of nurses, which in this representation is less than QE1, but more than the initial QEO. However, an increase or decrease is indeterminate. To wrap things up, the market price system provides a highly efficient mechanism for disseminating information about relative scarcities of goods, services, and labor, and financial capital. Market participants do not need to know why prices have changed, only that the changes require them to revisit previous decisions they made about supply and demand. Price controls hide information about the true scarcity of products and thereby cause misallocation of resources.